he ate the earth and pot. So he, he was a really, Madhavendra Puri understand, he was the spiritual master of Advaita Acharya. So he was a very, very great devotee. And he was also, of course, the guru of Ishwara Puri. Just a couple of days ago, we celebrated the, di the disappearance of Shripad Ishwara Puri. So Ishwara Puri was the servant of Madhavendra Puri. But often Madhavendra Puri, he didn't have any servant. He would go, he would go to Govardhan and he would stay on the side of Govardhan and he would fast. He had the vow that if nobody gave him food, he would not eat. So Madhavendra Puri would not eat unless someone gave him food. And so then he was there at Govardhan and some, some days he would be fasting and some days Krishna would come and give him food. Krishna would come in the form of a cowherd boy and say that my mother sent you, sent me to give you this prasada. And my mother said, nobody is allowed, you know, this, this is very poor, the interference. I'll just speak. Okay, I'll speak. I have a loud voice <laughs> by the grace of Krishna. Uh, so Madhavendra Puri was a very great devotee. He was living there at Govardhan and Krishna would sometimes come and bring him prasada and he could eat. And then he had a dream and he found the deity on Govardhan Hill. He uncovered the deity in Govardhan Hill. That deity is worshipped today in Nathdwara. That deity is Srinathji. Mother Vendra Puri was the person who found this deity and he began the worship there on Govardhan Hill. So Mother Vendra Puri, he came here to this place in Muna and it was here that Gopinath stole the sweet rice to give to Madhavendra Puri. Maybe one of you are a great devotee, maybe Gopinath will steal another pot of sweet rice to give to one of you. Right? If you are a good, great devotee tonight, right? We'll have to see if the Pujari has a dream or not. Anyway, Madhavendra Puri came here Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came here after taking sannyas. He came here with the devotees on their way to Puri. And they stopped here at Rimuna. And they sat in front of the deity of Shirakura Gopina. And Lord Chaitanya heard Lord Nityananda describe the pastime of the deity stealing the sweet rice. Lord Nityananda knew because Lord Nityananda had been here before. As a young man, Lord Nityananda had been traveling everywhere with a sannyasi and he visited all the holy places. So he told the devotees and he told also Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu about this wonderful event which took place here and that's when the deity with name became not just Gopinath, but Shira Kora Gopinath, the deity who stole the sweet rice. So Madhavendra Puri, he uh, came here and his samadhi is here. And it, it is said, when Madhavendra Puri was leaving the world, he was being served by Ishwara Puri. Ishwara Puri was his disciple. Ishwara Puri was also sannyasi and he was serving his Guru Maharaj. 
and he was taking care of him. Madhavendra Puri's body was, you know, he was leaving the body, so the bodily condition, physical condition was not good. But Ishwara Puri would take care of him and he would remind him about Lord Krishna. He would help to remind him by chanting the glories and by speaking some focus and so on. And it is said that when Madhavendra Puri was leaving the world, he was regularly reciting a verse, a very famous verse. It said this verse is only understood by three people. Rad Srimati Radharani, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and Madhavendra Puri. They're the only three people who can actually understand the full meaning of this of that sloka. Uh, like this Madhavendra Puri was uttering this verse again and again. And it said this was this verse was recited by Srimati Radharani. And Srimati Radharani is praying in the mood of separation from Krishna. And she's praying to Krishna, where are you now, O master of Mathura? Because of my not seeing you, my most agitated heart has become disturbed. So, this verse is about feeling the separation, the vipralamba from Lord Krishna. It is said, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took initiation in this sampradaya because of Madhavendra Puri. Madhavendra Puri was the one who introduced in this line, in our, what we call Brahma, Madhava, Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. So, Madhavendra Puri, he was the one who introduced that mood of Vipralamba Seva, separation, in the mood of separation from Krishna. And Lord Chaitanya appreciated that so much. That is why he chose this Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya to take his initiation. And he so much appreciated Madhavendra Puri. Lord Nityananda was describing this pastime to, Madha, to Mahaprabhu and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became ecstatic himself and he collapsed and rolled in the dirt. And he was, he was calling out, Aidina, 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 like that. He was calling out, repeating the words which had been uttered by Srimati Radharani. So this is all described in Chaitanya Charitamrita. So Madhavendra Puri Samadhi is here. Because I don't know if he actually left the body here, but his, he has a Samadhi here. Anyway, uh, just like Prabhupada left the body in Vrindavan, but we have Pushpa Samadhi in Mayapur. So, I don't know if it's actual samadhi or pushpa samadhi. We'll find out. We can ask if we can find a reliable source. <laughs> you know, sometimes you don't know who to believe. You know, just like when you're coming here, you ask the way, you have to ask three or four people, you know, before you find out which is the actual way. You know, India is like that, you know. <laughs> Ask ten people. I know China's like that too. <laughs> Ask ten people before you know the way. So Madhavendra Puri Samadhi is here. And also this is the birthplace of a very important Vaishnava Acharya, Baladeva Vidyabhusan. So Baladeva Vidyabhusan, he was actually initiated initially in the Madhva Sampradaya. Madhva Sampradaya. So we are a little different from our, our line is Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Sampradaya. 
So Baladeva Vijabhusan, he was coming from the Madhva Sampradaya. Now Lord Chaitanya, when he was traveling around India, he went to Udupi, which is the place of Madhvachari, where Madhvachari is, Udupi Krishna is there. The famous deity which was found by Madhva Acharya is established in Udupi. And there are how many temples, seven or nine, and how many, some, a number of temples are there. And each temple will take turns to do the seva for the deity. So one year it will be one temple, and then the other temple say, I'll go out for preaching. And that one temple, they're doing the puja. And actually they do the puja, now they do it for two years. So every two years they change. That's in Udupi. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to Udupi and he talked with the devotees there. And he, found, he saw that they have a lot of leaning towards fruitive activity as well as impersonalism. Just last year, I had the opportunity to go to Bangalore, and in Bangalore, they have uh, a big Madhva temple. There's quite a few people follow Madhva there, and the, and I went to the Madhva temple, and I could see what they're they're doing. So many rituals, many many Karmakandi rituals. They do a lot of these things. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had gone to Udupi. 500 years ago or more, and he's spoken there with them, and he concluded also that within their sampradaya, there's some tendency towards fruitive activities, and also sometimes even impersonalism. So Mahaprabhu, he has the, not just Madhva, but Madhva Gaudiya sampradaya, you see? So he took initiation in that line because of Madhavendra Puri. Because Madhavendra Puri was teaching this, the mood of the gopis. The mood of the gopis is service in separation. Vipralamba Seva. So Baladeva Vijubhusan, he came after Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was born here in this Rimuna, in this village and he was initiated in the Madhva line. But then he heard about Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur and he went to Vrindavan and he associated there with Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. So Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, he has written many commentaries, he's written many books, maybe you've read some of his books. Madhurya Kadambini and things like that, and many co commentaries on Srimad Bhagavatam, Bhagavad Gita, and Prabhupada will often quote that Vishwanath Chakravarti says, Vishwanath Chakravarti says, and Prabhupada will quote his commentary in his purports. So Baladeva Vidya Bhusan, he went there and he associated with Vishwanath Chakravarti, and he, Vishwanath Chakravarti, taught him all the purports to the scriptures. He taught him the Siddhanta of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And Baladeva Vijabhusan was greatly impressed. So it happened at that time that a challenge came from Jaipur because the, the, the deities Remember, Jaipur had been under threat for some time because of Aurangzeb, and they had moved the deities there to Jaipur, like Radha Govinda, Radha Damodar, Radha Gopinath. They're still there in Jaipur. So the Ramanandis, they were associating with the king, the Maharaj of Jaipur. Nowadays, you don't have that. The government took everything away from all those people. Anyway, in that time, the Maharaj of Jaipur was very powerful and he was overseeing the worship of the deity of Radha Govinda. So these Ramanandis were saying that 
they were telling the king that these these people, these followers of Mahaprabhu, the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, he said, they are not bona fide. He said, they are apasampradaya. They are bogus. They are not really qualified. They shouldn't be worshipping the deity. And so they, they, they influenced the mind of the king of Jaipur. So the king of Jaipur was puzzled, you know. So he wrote a letter to Vrindavan. And he wrote to the, the pundits, the Brahmins there, they said, you know, you have to come and defend yourself. You're being challenged. You have to establish your authority. Prove that you're bona fide. So at that time, Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur was in poor health. But Baladeva Vijabhusan was there. So it was decided Baladeva Vijabhusan would go there to Jaipur. And he went there to Jaipur and he met with the Ramanandis. And one of the big challenges which was coming from the Ramanandis was, they said, you Gaudiya Vaishnavas are not bona fide. They said, you have no commentary on Vedanta Sutra. So Baladeva Vijabhusan replied, we have Srila Vyasadeva's own commentary on Vedanta Sutra. Srila Vyasadeva wrote the Srimad Bhagavatam. So that is the commentary on Vedanta Sutra. There's no need for any more commentaries. But the Ramananda said, no, everyone, all the other Sampradayas have their own commentary. Even uh, the, the, the Sri Vaishnavas, they wrote, Ramanuja wrote a commentary, Nambarka wrote a commentary, Vishnu Swami wrote a commentary, and, and they were saying, if you're really bona fide, you have to have a commentary on Vedanta Sutra. So it was a challenge. Baladeva Vidyu Bhusan, then he went, went to one place which is just in the outskirts of Jaipur, just on the mountainous place, and he prayed there. And he prayed to the Lord, prayed to Govinda, rather go, the deity, the deity of Govinda Ji is there in Jaipur. So he prayed to Govinda Ji that you please help me to write a commentary. And so Baladeva Vijabhusan, he sat there and he managed to write a commentary, a wonderful commentary on Vedanta Sutra. And Prabhupada appreciates that commentary so much that Prabhupada dedicates his own Bhagavad Gita. He said that he offers his own Bhagavad Gita to Baladeva Vijabhusan. Baladeva Vijabhusan named his commentary Govinda Bhashya, the speaking of Govinda. So this was a very important uh, victory for the Gaudiya Vaishnavas that Baladeva Vijabhusan defeated the Ramanandis, he showed them their commentary, our commentary on Vedanta Sutra, and he established that we were actually a bona fide Sampradaya. And we had the right to worship Govindaji. So that's very a very important victory. So took place, the, we'll see the, the birthplace of Baladeva Vijayabhusan. But today is also a very auspicious day. Today, of course, is Shivratri. And when we were coming here, coming all the way from Mayapur, we often saw many people carrying, they were carrying the, yeah, what do they call it? Oh, yeah, yeah, and they had a couple of pots, they were bringing their milk or water, bringing something to bathe the Shiva Linga. And so sometimes people wonder, oh, we're Gaudiya Vaishnavas, we only worship Radha and Krishna, do we also celebrate Shivratri? Well, it's mentioned in the 10th canto that Nanda Maharaj, on one occasion, he went to one, one place. I think it was, what was it called, Ambika? Something, and he went to one place where the Shiva temple was. He went to observe Shivratri. And Prabhupada explains that we Gaudiya Vaishnavas, we, we can observe Shivratri, but it's not compulsory. 
It's not like every year we have to observe it. But we may do it. And there's, there's no fasting. We don't usually fast on Shivratri. But we do honor Lord Shiva. We have to understand the position of Lord Shiva. And that is described to us by Lord Brahma in the Brahma Samhita. Right? Sri Ram Yata Dadi Vikara Vishesha Yogat Sanjayate Nahitata Pritagaste Heto Yasambutam Apikata Samapaiti Karyad Govinda Madi Pursham Hamaham Bajami. This verse describes the relationship between Govinda and Lord Shiva. Govinda, or the Supreme Lord Vishnu, he is described to be like milk, and Lord Shiva is like dahi, like the yogurt. So, milk can be turned into yogurt, but once you make the yogurt, you cannot turn it back to milk. It stays yogurt. You cannot, again, bring the yogurt back to milk. So, Lord Vishnu, he can become Shiva, but Lord Shiva can never become Lord Vishnu. This is relationship. At the same time, Lord Shiva enjoys very intimate association with Lord Vishnu. And you'll see, when we go on Parikrama, we go to one holy place called Hari Harshetra. So Hari is Lord Vishnu and Hara is Lord Shiva. And you see the deities combined in one form. Half is Vishnu and half <coughs> is Shiva. So Lord Shiva's connection with Lord Vishnu is so intimate that the two can become one in the form of the deity, like Hari Har. So Lord Shiva is uh, honored also as uh, we say Vaishnavam Yata Shambhu that he's the greatest Vaishnava. So we may wonder what did he do which is so great? Well one of the things which he did was he drank the poison when the demigods and the demons were churning the ocean of milk. They were churning to get the nectar of immortality. So at that time, they produced some poison. All, the whole ocean was covered with some poison. So they requested Lord Shiva to please come. And Lord Shiva came and he drank all the poison. And that was how he became a bluish color. And it's called Nila Kanta. From that time on, Lord Shiva got the name Nila Kanta, meaning one who, whose throat is blue. And you can see on his head, he also has a crescent moon. That crescent moon was given to Lord Shiva to keep him cool, because the effect of the poison makes the body very hot. So the crescent moon is there to keep Lord Shiva cool. Of course, Lord Shiva is such a great soul that when Mother Ganga wanted to come to the earth in, in fulfillment of the desire of Maharaj Bhagirat, Maharaj Bhagirat had been doing tapasya to bring, bring Mother Ganga down from the heavenly planets in order to deliver the sons of Maharaj Saga. So Mother Ganga said, the problem is if I come, that the force of my water on the planet will inundate the whole planet. And it, will, it could knock the whole planet out of orbit. So it was arranged, Maharaj Bhagirat arranged, Lord Shiva would take the Ganga on his head. And he caught the Ganga coming from heaven onto his head and Mother Ganga flows down from the head of Lord Shiva. So that is another wonderful act of Lord Shiva out of his compassion and his desire to deliver the fallen souls his hair is always wet with the water of the Ganga because the Ganga is flowing down from the heavenly planets onto his head and then down through Himalayan mountains 
And then Lord Shiva also is very kind to people in the mode of ignorance, people like ghosts and such creatures, evil spirits. Lord Shiva gives mercy to them. He delivers them and he arranges that they can get a human form. So Lord Shiva is so kind, he's giving so much mercy and compassion to the souls. Lord Shiva also teaches us the glories of the holy name. When Parvati was going to chant the Vishnu Sahasranam, at that time Lord Shiva said to her, Rame Rame Namo Rame, Rame, Rame. Sahasranam Abhistuyam Sahasranam Abhistuyam Shri Ramanam Avaranini Shri Ramanam Avaranini Lord Shiva is telling Mother Parvati, you don't need to chant 1,000 names of Vishnu. You just chant the one name of Lord Rama. One name of Lord Rama is equal to 1,000 names of Vishnu. That is one of Lord Shiva's instructions. And Lord Shiva also told Mother Parvati, when Mother Parvati got angry because of Chitraketu, those of you who read Shri Traveling, and he came around where Lord Shiva was sitting with his wife, and Lord Shiva was sitting in front of an assembly of many sages, and at the same time his wife was sitting on his lap, and he was embracing her. So Chitraketu Maharaj came there, he saw it, and he laughed, he thought it was amusing. But Parvati was quite offended and she cursed Ch Chitraketu that he should become a demon. And when Chitraketu was cursed, then Chitraketu offered obeisances to Mother Parvati. You know, if we get cursed, we will want to counter curse. Oh, you curse me, I'll curse you, right? And so, Chitraketu wasn't like that. Chitraketu thought, oh, thank you, Mother. And he offered obeisances to Mother Parvati and thanked her. And Mother Parvati was surprised. She thought, I thought I'd make him angry by cursing him. But he, he's, not, he's not worried. And he offered obeisances to me. And Lord Shiva said, Narayana Parasarve Nakutas Janya Vibhyate Swarga Apavarga Narakesh Vapitu Yatadarshana. Lord Shiva is teaching all of us, as well as his good wife, the greatness of those who have taken shelter of the personality of Godhead, Lord Narayan, that they see everyone equally. They see everything equal. Swarga Apavarga Narakesh. Heaven, liberation, and hell. It Vapitu yata darshana. They see it all the same. They don't make distinction between heaven and hell and liberation. So this is Lord Shiva's teaching to his good wife and to all of us. He's reminding us the situation of this material world. So we want to remember with some gratitude the wonderful service which Lord Shiva has. Usually when people worship Lord Shiva, they worship for some material desire. Just like it's described in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, there was one demon called Vrika, Vrikasura. And Vrikasura did great tapasya, he was cutting flesh off of Shiva. Finally Lord Shiva appeared. And then Vrikas asked for the benediction from Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva had, he had to come. He knew this person, Vrika, was a foolish person. But still, out of compassion, he wanted to give him a blessing. So he came and then he asked Vrikasura, so what blessing do you want? And Vrika said, I want the blessing. Whosever head I touch, their head will follow. And then Vrika wanted to touch Lord Shiva's head. <laughs> that was 
What happened? He wanted to touch Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva had to run. And he was running and Vrikha was chasing him. And finally, the Lord himself, Lord, the, the personality of God, Lord Vishnu came, took the form of a Brahmana, and he came to Vrikha, and he told Vrikha, he said, Oh, don't believe Lord Shiva. He's been acting very strangely. I don't believe he gave you that power. No, no, I don't believe it. It's not possible. You try yourself. Put your hand on your head. You'll see. So Vrikha put his hand on his head and boom! His whole head exploded, fell off. And so in this way, Lord Shiva was saved. So sometimes you give blessings, you know, demigods, devas like that. They will give these kind of blessings. Lord Shiva is also known as Asutosh, one who is easily pleased and also easily angered. So you have to be very careful. Now, most people, I said, they worship Lord Shiva to get material blessings. But if you want to get the real mercy of Lord Shiva, you get that through his Sampradaya. You take, go into his Sampradaya and get, get the mercy through his line, through the Vishnu Swami Sampradaya. And they will help you to get the real mercy of Lord Shiva. But most people, they think Lord Shiva is just there to get material blessings. They don't understand the real mercy of Lord Shiva, which is to get love of God. So today is Shivratri. <clears throat> All right, so my, my time is up for the Gita Reading Society, Singapore. Padmalochan Prabhu, thank you very much. Hare Krishna, thank you, Maharaj. So, maybe we'll take some questions from here. So, Srila Prabhupada explains, we have to cultivate that feeling, we should be cultivating that feeling. Where is Krishna? When will he come? We should be thinking in this way, when will, when will I ever be able to be with Krishna? We have to cultivate that feeling, that longing to be with Krishna. So, the mood of the gopis, service and separation, the Goswamis of Vrindavan, they cultivated that mood of separation. They performed their devotional service in that way, feeling separation from Krishna. Not thinking, now I see Krishna, I'm with Krishna, but thinking, when will Krishna come? <laughs> Vrindavan ke jo Goswami hai, unka bhi aisa hi chetna hai, aisa nahi 
सोचना चाहिए कि मैं ऑलरेडी इसको महसूस कर रहा हूँ तो ये भाव ये होना चाहिए कि कब मैं ऐसा महसूस करूँ तो ये हमारा हमेशा सोच होना चाहिए कब ऐसा मेरे अंदर भाव आए After Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took initiation from Ishwara Puri in Gaya, he came back to Mayapur. But before he came back to Mayapur, he had come through Kanai Natsala, and in Kanai Natsala, he had some experience. Krishna had appeared to him. So Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he came to Gaya, he had come through Ishwara Puri. दीक्षा लेने के बाद फिर आए थे मायापुर से और वापस आए थे तो उनको रास्ते में फिर ऐसा स्वप्न हुआ कनारी नक्षाला के बारे में उनको स्वप्न हुआ। So when he was in Mayapur, he was asking one day he turned to Gadarha and he asked him, Where is Krishna? Where is he? When will he come? Where is he? And Gadarha said, He's in your heart. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, When he heard, he's in my, he, he took his nails and he began to claw. Oh, I want to see him! I want to see him! And he was ripping at his skin, trying to tear his skin apart to find Krishna. So, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he came to Mayapur, he asked Sri Galadhar Pandit, where is Krishna? I didn't get to meet Krishna. Where is Krishna? When Galadhar Pandit said that Krishna is in your head, then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave his hand to his hand, and his hand to his hand, where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? Where is Krishna? And Gadarha Pandit had to take his hands and hold him and tell him, don't worry, Krishna is coming very soon, don't worry, just wait, just be patient, he's coming. And Mother Sachi was so grateful to Gadarha Pandit. She thanked him so much. She said, thank you for taking care of my son. And she said, you please always stay with my son. Never, don't let him go away. You always be with him. Help him. So, uh, we know His Holiness Gorgovinda Maharaj, who we are going to see in Bhubaneswar, we will see the temple which he established there. Gorgovinda Maharaj used to talk about, he wanted to make a school for crying. He wanted to train devotees that they could cry for Krishna. So, we have भुवनेश्वर जाएंगे कल तो वहाँ पे हम लोग इस कौन के मंदिर में जाएंगे और वहाँ पे हम देखेंगे इसलिए गौर गोविंद स्वामी महाराज के बारे में सुनेंगे तो गौर गोविंद स्वामी महाराज ऐसा एक स्कूल खोलना चाहते थे जहाँ पे भक्तों को कृष्ण के लिए रोना सिखाए सीख पाए कि हम लोग रो पाए कृष्ण के ऐसा स्कूल वो खोलना चाहते it's so anxious to see Krishna that you can shed tears. But if we are not, if we don't care, <laughs> then we, if we can't, if we're casual about it, then we'll never feel that separation. We have to want Krishna very badly, so much. We have to want Krishna so much that we can shed tears. Okay. Yes. Oh. Thank you, Maharaj, for the incredible lecture and uh, explaining about the Vidya Loka. Uh, Maharaj, uh, today's uh, Shivaratri, my question is related to Lord Shiva. So, at this uh, present day, the, in the days of social media, sometimes when we go out for a teaching or you know, we encountered multiple people, uh, you know, remembering about that it's called the same Lord Shiva and uh, not accepting Krishna as a supreme personality. However, uh, we are giving the examples as a, of, of the scriptures that uh, in the Brahma Sainta of Lord Brahma Sainta, there is 
Satishwara Parma Krishna and from the Bhagavatam that Krishna is to Bhagavan to have mentioned that. But they, uh, they are saying that uh, Vedavyasa wrote uh, Shiva uh, Puran and uh, Vedavyasa also written uh, with uh, Shiva Bhagavatam. How can you say that Shiva Bhagavatam is greater than Shiva Bhagavatam? How can you encounter these uh, questions in real life? So, Prabhu Jika Prashna, Aaj Ke Shivratri Ke Parth Se Hai Ki आज कल का जो इंटरनेट का जमाना है तो वहाँ पे बहुत सारा ऐसा सुनने को मिलता है लोग बोलते हैं कि इस कौन संस्था जो है वो भगवान शिव को जो उनकी स्थिति को अच्छे से नहीं समझते हैं और वो तो इसमें क्या सत्य है वो हमारा कि उनको समझाने का प्रयास करते हैं ब्रह्म समिता इत्यादि से उनको समझाते हैं लेकिन वो हमारे ऊपर उल्टा तर्क करते हैं और बोलते हैं कि वेद व्यास ने भगवान शिव के बारे में भी लिखा है और भागवत के बारे में लिखा है तो वो भगवान भागवत पुरानी क्यों ज़्यादा महत्वपूर्ण so Srila Vyasadeva wrote the Puranas, he wrote books for different people. Some books are for people in the mode of ignorance, some books are for people in the mode of passion, some books are people for people in the mode of goodness. And Srimad Bhagavatam also tells us the history of the Srimad Bhagavatam, how Srila Vyasadeva, after writing so many books, he was not satisfied. So, Srimad Bhagavatam ke andar hi, hume Srimad Bhagavatam ke itihaas ke baare mein pata chalta hai ki kaise Srila Vyasadeva ne saare grandho ke rachna karne ke baad, wo bade ki dhukhi the, santush nahi the. He wrote 18 Puranas, 6 Puranas for each of the three modes. And he wrote, of course, Mahabharat, which is very, very voluminous, more than a hundred thousand verses. And then he wrote also Vedanta Sutra. But after writing all of these things, he was not satisfied. He had written about Karmakand, and he had written about Jnanakand, but he had never written anything about Upasanakand or Bhakti. He hardly touched on the, so that's why Narada Muni told him, he said, the problem is you have neglected to glorify the process of devotion to the Supreme Lord. So that was when Srila Vyasadeva, after taking instruction from Narada Muni, then he wrote Srimad Bhagavatam, which is his mature contribution, his mature realization. So we explain to them like that. Or any other question? Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. What? Yes. How is it all the same? Because wherever the devotee goes, He's going to chant Hare Krishna and he's going to engage in Krishna's service. Right? One who is devotee doesn't make any difference where he goes, but his activities will be for Krishna. He'll be chanting and preaching the glories of Krishna and doing devotional service wherever he goes. So it doesn't make any difference whether he's in hell or heaven or he's, in liber he's liberated, wherever he goes, he'll be doing the same business, the activities are there, bhakti yoga. So, uh, 
नर्क स्वर्ग और मुक्ति तीनों को भक्त के लिए एक जैसा बताया गया है क्यों तो महाराज बता रहे कि इतनी एक जैसा बताया गया कि भक्त को कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता है जहाँ भी जाएगा वो हरे कृष्णा कैंटीन ही करेगा जहाँ भी जाएगा वो भगवान की सेवा में लगेगा इसलिए एक भक्त के लिए कहीं पर भी जाए उसके लिए सब एक ही जैसा है क्योंकि वो कार्य वही करता है हर जगह So hell becomes heaven for a devotee, and heaven is like hell if you're not a devotee. If they don't swear, yes, who the narc is, who swear is a man like that, who, or who must be not a, who swear is a narc just like. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. How do we? Well, we we have to become a little detached to these situations, you know, because we're so still much in the bodily concept of life, and so we we become troubled by these things. But the devotee you just tolerate these things, be indifferent to them. Sometimes you are given a nice, comfortable place, and sometimes it's hell. But don't be disturbed. You're not staying there forever. तो प्रश्न ये था कि हम जब सेल गाड़ी में आ रहे थे तो बहुत बदबू आ रहा था वहाँ पे और कुछ बाथरूम भी इतने साफ नहीं थे तो अभी आपने जैसे बताया कि भक्त को नर्क भी अच्छा लगता लेकिन हमें तो वहाँ पे नर्क नर्क जैसा माहौल लग रहा था और तो और वहाँ पे लेकिन और बहुत सारी ऑपरेशन थी प्रचार करने की तैयारी तो लेकिन तो उसको कैसे तो महाराज बता रहे कि हमें भगवत भी सोच बाबा जी का पूछा गया कि वो कैसे टॉयलेट के पास जब करते थे तो महाराज बता रहे कि हमें थोड़ा डिटैचमेंट का भाव उत्पन्न करना पड़ेगा अगर हम बहुत ज़्यादा शारीरिक शरीर से आसक्त रहेंगे तो फिर हमेशा हमें यही चिंता रहेगा कि हमें क्या मिल रहा है क्या नहीं शरीर से थोड़ा निराशक्त रहेंगे तो हमें उतना दिक्कत नहीं होगा हमें हमेशा वहीं पे रहना नहीं है तो महाराज जी ने बताया ओके एनी अदर क्वेश्चन ओके यस मेरी जी Yes, uh, as we're beginning devotional service, we have to be cautious to balance the two. We don't encourage people to prematurely give up everything, but we encourage you to find a balance. We give the example: train goes on two tracks. So if the tracks are not level, train will overturn. So the same way, we want to be balanced: our material side and our spiritual side. You have to keep them both uh, in order. You do have to look after the body. Our bodies are not spiritual. We have to take care of it. We have to eat regularly. We have to sleep regularly. We have to control the mind and senses. Right? We don't say uh, stop everything. You know we cannot imitate 
very great liberated souls. We can't be like Madhavendra Puri and just wait for people to give us food. Mm. So we have to take care of the body. At the same time, we have to also balance our spiritual life. We need to chant. We need to hear about Krishna. Then gradually, as we progress, then you can give up less, more and more of the things concerned with the body. So that finally you'll see in Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, Maharaj Parikshit had been cursed to die for, in seven days. So Sukadeva Goswami was telling him about renunciation. He said, leave home, get out of the house, you know, leave home. And uh, he was telling him even, minimize the demands and just depend on nature. If you want to eat, just take some fruit from the tree and drink the water in the river. Oh my goodness. Of course today, how we could do that, you yeah. know, of course. But uh, still, this was their recommendation. He was giving the instruction to minimize the demands of the body. Because our tendency is always we want to maximize everything. And we make arrangements for our own comfortable living. So Sukadeva Goswami was warning Maharaj Pariksit that don't be attracted to the comforts. Don't think about going to heaven and enjoying comforts there. But understand that all of these those things, the comforts, the luxury, that's all for the body. We want to minimize the body and we want to practice a more basic living, simple living, and high thinking. So we want to thank Maharaj very much uh, from the core of our hearts. We are so blessed that we have Delhi to Remuna. Maharaj also was so kind. My Maharaj to Pusha Taki Maharaj would like to come to Bangkok next. Mujhe lag raha tha thoda inconvenient hoga yahan se itna dura na. But Maharaj uh, immediately agreed. Immediately Maharaj said ki uh, I will try to come. And then Maharaj took that all the trouble. यहाँ पे महाराज आए तो हम सबके पास बहुत सौभाग्य है ये महाराज से सुनने का एक्चुअली धाम यात्रा का पर्पस यही है बाहर हम जाके आंखों से देखेंगे उससे हम धाम को दर्शन नहीं करते अलग अलग जगह में जाके देखेंगे तो हम जो सीरियसली धाम का दर्शन करना चाहते हैं महाराज से सुनेंगे श्रवण के माध्यम से हम असली दर्शन करते हैं तो हमें पूरा पूरा लाभ उठाना चाहिए हमारे जीवन का हो सकता है सबसे महत्वपूर्ण ये यात्रा हो तो है कि नहीं आप लोग यात्रा के भी कई सारे पर्व हैं उनको भी हम धन्यवाद देना चाहते हैं एक बार हम महाराज के लिए पूरे उत्साह से हरे कृष्णा महामंत्र बोलते हैं धन्यवाद देते हुए हरे
நிறைய பேர் தான் வந்திருக்காங்க கசிக்க போங்க